hello and welcome to my channel. This is Dr. Dawn Michael. For those of you that are returning, welcome back. And for those of you that are new, I hope you enjoy this video. And uh, take a moment to look through some of my other videos. There's some great information that I have brought forward. And I like to discuss things that are not often discussed in the media and give a different perspective on sexual issues, relationships, and also current events. If you like my video, please make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel as well as leave your comment. This does help to get my video out there so that other people can find it. Um, and you know what? Sometimes um, these educational type videos get lost in the mix and some more of the sensational stuff comes out and I really would like people to understand human sexuality and relationships from a standpoint of research along with my many years of working with people. Today I'm going to be discussing um, how to manage, how to fix, how to deal with sexual issues. And the most important part about this and how I can help you is really understanding why you have them. And this is part of us as humans. In order for us to fix things, we really do want to understand why we have them to begin with. Because once you know the why and you understand it, then you're able to slowly fix what you think the problem is. If you don't know the why and you don't really have an understanding of why you feel a certain way, perhaps why you're attracted to a particular type of sexual fetish per se, or that you are aroused by something that you're not sure of. Maybe you feel that you have to be aroused by something that you are not comfortable with and you want to find out why. And it, and it is important to understand that aspect of it in order to work through it and take the time to figure out if it's something that is working in your life or if it's something that you really do need to get, to get help for or that you can fix. So what I'm going to focus on at the moment, because I do have so many people who ask me questions about, let's say, a fetish an arousal, perhaps they're in a relationship and they're not able to share what their sexual desire is with the person they're with. Perhaps they are afraid to get into a relationship because they're afraid to expose what turns them on. And it's something that's keeping them from really being involved with someone because they're just simply afraid to share it, that the other person might think it's unusual or maybe it is unusual. Maybe it really is, you know, far out of the quote unquote norm. And even though I don't like to basically say there's a quote unquote norm, there is a norm for you and there is a norm that makes you feel comfortable. And there is a norm when you get into a relationship with someone, if they're able to accept it and if they're able to understand it um, and enjoy it with you. If you're finding that it's keeping you from all of these things, then it is something that you might want to change because your life should not be dominated or consumed by a sexual fetish, a sexual desire. Uh, many times people uh, feel a sense of guilt or shame around it. They don't understand why they have it, how it originated. Uh, many times I will get from people, oh, you know, I just have to accept it because I was born this way or, um, you know, it just happened to me. But they can't really resolve these issues until they have an understanding of why it may have happened and why they're still thinking about it in the future and how it is impacting their life today. So 
as much as I don't like to delve back into people's pasts, if they can stay in the present and work through some of their issues, for some people that's not possible. For some people to really get through some of their sexual issues, they need to understand the origin of them, why they have them, when did it start, how did it start, and then kind of move, move forward from there. Now, one of the things that I have seen, I would say over the past 10 years, that has gotten worse is more and more people are being attracted to erotic, kinky, different types of fetishes, um, positions, just different things than they had in the past. And they have come to light for one reason, and that is because people are being exposed to it. So if you're exposed to something that you don't really understand why it turned you on, and if you're exposed to it as a younger person, because our brains are not fully developed, we don't really understand how we feel sexually, and so these things may be confusing. Uh, the more people that I see that are in their late teens, early 20s, that are having issues with sex, issues with relationships, many times are also having confusion surrounding attraction. Uh, they're having confusion surrounding things that um, are arousing them. They are getting into watching not just porn, but I would call it extreme porn. And that's something we didn't have maybe 10 years ago. And also a bigger issue and a bigger problem is that we are exposing our children and our youth to extreme porn and they simply just can't comprehend much of it. Uh, I'm going to kind of leave the idea of this with adults because they really, they may have a better understanding or they've had life experience. So some of the things that they see, they can deal with better. But I can tell you, um, the younger a person is, the more they're exposed to watching um, even bizarre sexual acts or a lot of the videos have some very violent uh, sexual acts in them, unrealistic. They get in their idea that perhaps this is the way sex is, or even if they don't, they've still been exposed to it and they can't unsee what they've seen. Now, uh, many of the problems that I see that people have with, let's say, a sexual fetish um, or a particular arousal to something, it really does go back to a point in their childhood. They may not realize it, and it could be something that isn't so obvious, but there usually is something in their childhood that they have seen, that they have witnessed, that they have been exposed to, and they're not processing it well, or they feel shame around it, or they don't have anyone to really talk to about it. And so they may find a sense of fascination because there might have been a certain amount of arousal. So what they do is they will start thinking about it more. Um, they have access to the computer now, so they will look into it more. And what this does is it basically, I don't want to say solidifies, but the more that they watch it, the more that they feel the shame around it, the more that that is heightened because there is a certain amount of adrenaline that gets spiked. There's this curiosity because, you know, people doing things with other people's bodies and their bodies, it's interesting. I mean, it, it draws people in and it's human nature. So if that wasn't there, then somebody wouldn't have the opportunity to view it or look at it. They wouldn't even know it existed to some extent, and they wouldn't be exposed to it. So, so they never would have had this particular type of fetish. 
and, and if you can understand that maybe your sexual desire or your fetish started off when you were younger, um, and children are innocent, truly, they, they really don't understand what they're seeing. Their brains just um, can't understand it because they're not really sexual yet. They're not, their hormones haven't kicked in. I mean, something may feel good, something might look interesting, um, but they may not even realize at the time they're exposed to it that there should be a certain amount of, I don't want to say shame attached to it, but maybe it's something they shouldn't have seen and they don't really realize it. So fast forward into adulthood, if you can think back now to what that moment is, then you can kind of work forward and try to deal with why you're feeling a certain sexual attraction now. So finding the basis of when it started, understanding that perhaps you were younger, you didn't ask for it to start. Um, even if you were curious and you saw something, Again, you are young and it's not something that you normally would have been exposed to. And, and there's so much that goes into this because, you know, pe kids can be abused, sexually abused. And unfortunately, this stays with them um, into their adulthood because it's a whole mind-body experience that somebody goes through. And if somebody was forced into doing something or coerced into doing something, then oftentimes they'll have um, a submissive nature to it at some part. <clears throat> and then other people will be aggressive in trying to seek that out later in life. And then some people, you know, won't act on it, but they will still be aroused by maybe a sexual situation that happened to them when they were younger. So it's really important to understand the genesis of, of when this happened and work forward and try to untangle this because uh, sexuality is really confusing. And the other aspect of this is that you can build on a fetish. So let's say it started off, you know, small, and then you think about it, maybe you masturbate to it, maybe you watch videos uh, surrounding it, maybe you go out and try it, and now you've kind of stepped into this lifestyle and you've thrown yourself into it, um, and it's not maybe necessarily where you wanna be, or you don't feel comfortable with it then you have to take some steps back and you have to analyze your life. Like, is this the direction that I want my life to be going in? If it's not, then you need to start changing it. And you need to start doing things to get out of this cycle because it does go through this kind of cycle. Uh, my recommendation for that is really to get some counseling, to get some help from someone that you feel comfortable with. If you're to that stage of your life where you realize that, hey, you know what, I'm not happy with, what, with what's going on. And that point happens when you can't have a relationship or you're in a relationship and things aren't going well and you finally start realizing that perhaps it is a problem okay and when you realize that it's a problem then you can't sweep it under the carpet it doesn't go away you have to deal with it and you have to take responsibility for maybe um, your time that you're still putting into feeding the fetish, feeding the sexual attraction, um, instead of understanding why you have it and dealing with it. So this is, this is really important. Um, I know many times people that have um, a lot of kinky eroticism who've been opened up to sexuality, it does correlate uh, with creativity. I see this more in people that are creative. They have, um, 
these these fantasies and these stories that go on in their mind and they could have cultivated this from a very young age and so it comes out in all different ways and a lot of it is sexual. Um, I do see more of this in men than I do in women. I'm not sure if it is driven from a, a, a testosterone. I'm not sure if men are more experimental than women, which I think in many instances, if a woman wanted to try something that was more kinky or she wanted to try something with another woman, I think men are more apt to be flexible with that as opposed to women. Uh, so I see more um, of the men that are, that are having problems with this area, uh, trying to find a partner. Women, again, have their own issues with this because I think a lot of them end up getting more depressed by it. Um, they feel a lot of shame around it. And so they may even at some point turn off sexually completely. So, you know, everybody has their own unique experience. They react to it in their own way. But if it's something that you truly think is disrupting your life, is causing you pain in your life, um, is making it so that you don't feel like you're having a, a productive life, a happy life, you're able to maintain relationships or be in a relationship, or you're doing destructive things in your relationship, or even that you're thinking of doing something that's going to jeopardize your relationship, all of these things are problems. And if you're watching this right now, you must know that part of that resonates with you. So my suggestion is find out where it started and try to understand first why you feel this way. Once you have a basic understanding of it, then you can start to deal with it in a healthy, productive way. So I hope this video has untangled some of this for some of you out there. Um, I just want to put out that I do have a question section on my website. Uh, for a small fee, you can ask me a question. And then I also do counseling. Um, all that information is located on my website, and that is thehappyspouse.com. And you can also leave your comment here. As you know, I believe everyone deserves to have a healthy sex life, and so do you.